Wanda liked it. <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while. Hi there. Hello on the camera. My name is Pastor Bill and this is Thrive Worship Center. We're here in Vienna, West Virginia. We're glad that you have tuned in. Today you're going to want to stay with us because I'm going to give you seven promises regarding what's going to happen to you in the future. I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you your future, because the Bible tells us our future. And I, I, um, I listen to sermons and teaching from different Bible teachers, I don't know how many hours each week, lots, uh, 20, 30 hours a week, maybe, I don't know, a lot. And, uh, and I read a lot, and I, and I find some of these wonderful points um, that uh, a pastor or a Bible teacher will bring. And so I, I'll give credit for these seven uh, promises to uh, Dr. Ed Henson. Uh, he's uh, at Liberty University, and um, I've read two of his books on the end times. And, um, and uh, you're, I, I know you're going to enjoy this. Why am I bringing this today? I'm bringing this today because... I think that we need a little hope. Can I get an amen? amen. Last week, I'm going to play music, music stand. Last week, I had a chance to bring some hope. Amen. And uh, and this week, I'm going to bring you some hope. And next week, I'm going to bring you more hope. We're going to have the month of hope. As Robert Schuller used to say, tough times never last, but tough people do. <laughs> you gotta have hope. Remember him, Robert Schuller? Yeah. Who knows Robert Schuller? Oh boy, y'all are missing out. <laughs> Robert, Robert Schuller was really the original seeker sensitive uh, pastor in, in America. He set up um, the first drive-in church in, in the history of America, to my knowledge. It was in Orange County. Um, Orange County had a very large drive-in movie theater that I guess had been shut down. And, um, and he, uh, he, he set it up. Car, I, I'm not kidding. They built a big stage. I mean, this was way before anyone's time. And people drove up and they put the thing in the car window and they did church. That's what started really the seeker sensitive movement uh, it caught on very quickly and um, and uh, well the rest is history his uh, his his um, church in California when we we would visit it at Christmas time because it was extraordinary it was made of glass it was called the Crystal Cathedral I don't know if you should google it if you're curious the whole darn thing was glass I don't know how they kept it clean it was extraordinary. And at Christmas and at Easter, they would do these tremendous uh, things with angels flying in the sky and horns blowing, and and, uh, and 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 the camels would go up the middle of the aisle, and sometimes you'd have to go home and work. And so anyway, yeah, it was fun. All right, so now that I've got that out of my system, y'all. We are living, we are living in biblical times, and you say to me, "Well, Pastor Bill, of course we're living in biblical times. We, we follow the Bible, and I, I hope you follow the Bible. Um, if you're uh, watching from the camera today, and, and you don't have a Bible with you, you might want to go get one, or at least get a pad of paper. You're going to want to take some notes down, and y'all might want to get ready to take some notes down too. I see everybody they type on their telephone and." I'm going to give you a fair amount of verses today, but I want you to know something important, that we live, we live in biblical times. Make no mistake about it. What's happening around the world today is epic. I mean, it is absolutely epic. You can take it right out of, right out of Matthew 24. I mean, it's and people, oh, Pastor Bill, you preachers are always talking about the end of the world. I'm not talking about the end of the world. <laughs> Who's saying anything about that? I'm saying, I'm saying that life as we know it, as the world knows it, 
in terms of how we live life on this spinning marble, it, it's, it's going to change. It's going to win. I don't know. Tomorrow, a month from now, a year from now, 10 years from now, um, I've been saying lately it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it's years, not decades, but we don't know. Jesus told the apostles, don't worry about it, guys. Go about your business. Do what you need to be doing. Be ready. Get ready. Get set. But you, you need to be out there getting your job done. Amen? And as a Christian, and, and, I'm, and don't, I'm not talking to anybody in particular here this morning. If I look at you, don't think I'm, I'm, I'm mad at you or something, because I'm not. I love you. That's why I might look at you and smile or something. And it, it's... We, we are not, in general, just in general, the body of Christ, most Christians, we're missing out on a lot. We're missing out on so much. And it's been the reason, and you say to people, how do you know that? Folks, I talk to people every day. I ask people, ask, me, ask my wife, Michelle, if it's not true. I ask people every day questions about the Bible. I'm just curious as to where they are. I don't know how many questions I've asked. I was keeping a, a, a survey on my iPad one time of this one particular question I asked, but I got tired of asking it because everybody said they don't know. I mean, everybody said I don't know. So I'm like, well, if everybody says I don't know, I guess that means nobody knows. So why bother asking the questions? We are living in biblical times, and there are several things that are happening that, that in, in our world today. They're called the signs of the times. And there's, there's six or seven of them, and I want to give them to you, and you write them down, and later on you go look and see if I'm not, if I'm not right on this, amen, the signs of the times. Why is this important? Well, because David Reagan, who does the uh, Prophecy Watcher uh, and the Lamb and, Lion, Lion, blah, 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 sure. Lamb and Lion Ministries, he says that we are at a point of convergence. Who knows what the word convergence means? Everything's coming together. And we are. We are. And all you Bible guys have been saying this since Hal Lindsey wrote the late great planet Earth in 1970. No. You, I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You better pay attention. You on the camera, pay attention to me. How do I know this? Because, well, there's several things. Number one, signs of nature. <clears throat> nature is changing in the world. Make no mistake about it. There, the, the number of, of floods and hurricanes and, and, and earthquakes, I mean, it is growing exponentially. Well, the, the world's getting old. Well, now, just wait a minute. Hold on. I sound like Andy Griffith there, don't I? Just wait a minute. I, you, you know, you, would, you guys, you, you, you scientists, you Neil deGrasse Tyson, who go, oh, the world is 16 billion years old. Really? Well, how come earthquakes are quadrupling and quadrupling and growing it. How come it's, it's speeding up and getting faster and faster in the last 10 years? What happened the first... You know, if we'd have had all these earthquakes in the first 16 million years, this planet would look like a chunk of rock or something. It wouldn't be nice and pretty and round, would it? I don't think so. would be water everywhere. You know, you ever been in an earthquake? Who's been in an earthquake? <laughs> Woo! Mercy! We had a pool in our backyard in, in, uh, in Mission Viejo, California, and that earthquake hit, and I went out there, and that, the water was splashing out of the pool. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is serious business. We've got signs of society that are occurring. It's called culture wars. Who, who in here, in, in, the, in the year 2000, heard anything about woke and CRT? Anything? Nothing. It's y'all. It, how about in 2010? 2015, nothing, absolutely nothing. And then uh, 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 Donald Trump became the president of the United States, and I think these folks got together and they said, you know what, it's time to topple the apple cart. We're, we're going to do something about this guy. And they created culture wars. The, the wars, that, the, the cult, a culture war means that we have different cultures that are literally growing apart in America and they're becoming very dramatic. You remember in the 60s when the Vietnam culture was going on and we, we had the hippies and, the, and, uh, and then you had the military people and you want to talk about a clash. 
I remember that when I was young, and, and it's one of the reasons that I love Pastor Chuck Smith, and who's now gone to be with the Lord, but Pastor Chuck Smith, what he did was instead of saying, you stinky hippie, get away from me, he sent his daughter out on Pacific Coast Highway with her boyfriend and looked for a hippie. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. They went and they, they saw a, a, a hippie walking up the road. In California, they called them hippies. And he had a Bible under his arm. They pulled over. They said, will you come home with us? Our dad wants to meet you. And they took that. This is a true story. You can buy the books in my office. You can read it. it they, they took the guy home. His name was Lonnie Frisbee. Yeah? And he spent two weeks with the Smith family. And it changed, it changed the whole it changed the world. Literally. Look it up. Calvary Chapel in Southern California. And, and here we are, and, and, and we're kind of in the same boat, in my opinion. Y'all, some of you may be wondering, you know, uh, Pastor Bill, what are you thinking? Uh, folks, I have a vision for the future. I have a vision for the same thing to happen here at this church that happened in Southern California in 1960s and 70s and 80s. It's, I have the same vision. We're just doing it with people that come from a, a, a background of substance abuse. Steven, stand up. Go ahead. Take a bow. Travis, stand up. Gabby, where are you? Stand up. Take a bow. Amen. Other people with issues? Get up. I, um, <laughs> any gummy bears, homie? <laughs> I, uh, I, I wouldn't take the pain pills. They gave me pain pills, and I wouldn't take them because I'm afraid of that stuff. I gotta be honest. Um, I, I'm just afraid of it. And I'm afraid it will make me weird. And it actually did. Well, I wrote something the other night. I, I might read it to you. It's about 2 a.m. If I read this to you, you're going to go, whoa, <laughs> William. Um, I finally broke down. And I, and I took a half of one. And I thought, huh, not bad. <laughs> and so Michelle said to me, honey, she said, if you'll get ahead of the pain, You'll, you'll feel better. And, and, I, and I, did what, I did what she said. Now my, 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 my hip hurts because I've been laying down in this chair the whole time. But, but um, Rusty came over and he looked at me and he went. <laughs> <laughs> he said, Pastor Bill, your eyes are glassy. And I went, really? <laughs> I'm all right now. I, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't take any yesterday. I'm fine. I'm not. I promise you, I'm fine. I, I, on purpose, I didn't take any. Yeah, we're living in this time when the uh, when the world hmm, needs something amazing to happen. And you say to me, Pastor Bill, who I'm gonna preach today? You say to me, Pastor Bill, who the heck are you to think that you got some vision? I tell you exactly who I am. I'm a child of God. What's your vision? What's your plan? What are you thinking about for the future? That's my question. You say, but Pastor Bill, don't pick on I'm not picking on you. I'm just saying, what's your plan? Everybody know who Stephen Covey is? Yeah. Stephen Covey? All right. Uh, Stephen Covey wrote this book, Seven Highly Effective Things That Highly Effective People Do or something. Seven Habits. Thank you very much, madam. What was this first one? Begin, <laughs> begin with the end in mind. That was the first one. Yeah. When we were we were young sales reps for the companies that I worked for, they were constantly drilling this stuff into us. Tony Roberts, Roberts, uh, Robbins, whatever his name was. Anyway, anyway. So the vision. I'm kind of. I need. To, the vision. The vision is that this place will be a school. We, will, we, will ha we won't be on this campus a few years from now. We will be on the south campus of OVU. I fully, I fully believe that God is going to let us buy that campus. Now you're like, oh, Bill, you're crazy. No, I'm not. you got a dream. 
You've got to have hope. You've got to have big hopes. you got to, you know, and it's, it, it, it's Queen Elizabeth said before she passed away, not everybody has to do, or not everybody can be great. Matter of fact, very few people alive are great. You know, we're not great. We're just normal folks in West Virginia trying to find our car keys is the truth. But she said, you can do great things. And we can. We've got to have hope, particularly in this crazy world we live in. You want to know more about that school and the and the, the junior high school and the high school and the Bible college and the and the hundreds of ministers that we train and send them all over the world? Come talk to me later. There's seven of them in training right now in this building. You, if, if there's any other church in town that's training seven ministers to go out and take, tell the go, share the gospel of Jesus Christ, give me a call. I'll collaborate with you. Yeah. Amen. You got you got to start somewhere. Somebody says to me, "Well, you only have seven students. How many do you have?" <laughs> They're spiritual signs. All these crazy cults that are out there. Oh, I could go on all day, and I don't need to. You know what a you know what a uh, a spiritual sign is? A, a crazy cult. The 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 cults, as we say, uh, are negative signs, but there are positive signs too, and that is the Holy Spirit increasing increasing in activity around the world. And it's happening, y'all. Y'all, there's revival in South America and North Africa right now. And if you want to live in a bad place, move to North Africa. I mean, there is nothing there but trouble. And there's revival going on there. And there's going to be revival in other places. You say to me, Pastor Bill, what, what do you mean revival? I'm not talking about packing a bunch of people that have been going to church for 50 years into a building and getting them to run forward and get slain in the spirit. I'm talking about an awakening. An awakening like you would never believe, that you've never seen before. You've read about from the Great Awakening and, the, and whenever that happened in the 1900s or whatever. I'm talking about a, a straight up awakening. And it's going to happen. Unfortunately, there's some stuff that's going to have to happen to, to, shake, to shake the tree. And God is going to shake the tree. You, you need to know that. You, it's, I know that you may not care for that. You don't want to hear that, but it's true. Pastor Bill, how do you know? The Bible says so. <laughs> the Bible is crystal clear. Oh, you're poo-pooing the great revival coming. No, I'm not. First of all, I don't think there's a great revival coming. I think there's a great awakening coming. I believe that. And I believe that when God shakes, starts shaking this tree a little bit more, and he is right now, we've got world politics. We've got war in the Middle East. We've got an, what appears to be an eminent war in the South China Sea. Xi Jinping said he will not pass this issue of Taiwan and China on to the next generation. It, if, if they are not planning on attacking Taiwan in the near future, I'll eat your hat. You know, I mean, it's Kelly, I don't know. You, you were in the Pentagon. What do you think, darling? Uh, right now. Yeah. Whether you like Biden or not, he's considered by the other world leader. Right. Yes, ma'am. Well, but that's exactly what it means. It means. Yeah. And so. don't get me started on that. <laughs> Y'all, thank you, Kelly. Uh, I mean, Kelly worked in the Pentagon. If anybody gets the stuff she does. Look, I was raised in the military. And, and there are things happening around the world. Um, uh, Vladimir Putin has gone to a partial mobilization of uh, young men and young women in Russia. And they're not happy. Yeah, yeah. They want to. They want to bring in three hundred thousand people. You know, Iran. If you don't think Iran isn't a powder keg, powder keg, a powder keg, I'm here to tell you, it is a, a powder keg. It's an absolute. Go ahead, Seth. Get it out. It's an absolute, I mean, it's, 
I mean, they, how many red lines are you going to draw? Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am. But uh, have you heard of a guy named Sean Foy? No. Okay. Oh, my gosh. The guy that he, he has Michigan called last year, so he's basically in the game. Write that down, because later I'm going to hope you're going to go look at this. 
Write down Proverbs 62, verse 12. Right, we're still under rewards. Write down Revelation 14, verse 13. Write down the word supper. S-U-P-P-E-R. I've never heard of supper until I moved to West Virginia. We called it dinner. Lunch and dinner. Supper. What are you doing? I'm having supper. What's that? Okay. Supper. Revelation 19.6. Hosea 12 and 19. If I'm going too fast, let me know. After all this, y'all just go to Stephanie. She'll make you a copy of her notes. She's a good note taker. Isaiah 54, 5. Write down the word second coming. These are promises. I'm going to explain this to you in a second. Second coming, Revelation 19, 11. The book of Jude, it's only one chapter, verse 14. Write down the word millennium. Millennium. M-I-L-L-E-N-N-I-U-M. -L -L -E millennium. Revelation 20. 2 Timothy 3.11. And Daniel 7.18. There's two more. i got two more for you. Write down New Heaven. New Earth. New Heaven, New Earth. Revelation 20, again. 2 Peter, chapter 3, verse 11. Isaiah 57, 15. You getting all this down, madam? You're amazing. <laughs> Isaiah 65, 17. Isaiah 65, 17. And then finally, like the end of a movie where there's going to be a sequel, put down the words the end. You know, at the end of the movie, Bugs Bunny, da 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 the end. <laughs> but there's going to be a sequel, right? Put down Revelation 22. Y'all, promise number one. There is a rapture coming. When? I have no idea. But I just went through a litany of about ten things that are happening around the world that are, I don't have time, to, it's a seminar. I mean, we could take a whole Saturday on it. We could show you all these things. And there's a multitude of books out there if you're curious. My, I would say that the thing I'm the most well acquainted with in the whole Bible is eschatology. I mean, I've read many, many books about it. I'm mean, totally in, 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 intrigued by it. There's a rapture coming. When? Don't know. Years, not decades. What's a rapture? Turn in your Bibles to the first chapter of Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, chapter 4. What's a rapture? While you're turning over there, the word rapture um, was was uh, uh, the, the English word. The first the first Bible that was ever written down it was in Latin. You had the you had the Hebrew Bible and you had the Greek. You put the two together, they created the Latin Vulgate, right? They spoke Latin, and Latin the word was either rapper. Or rapapo, or something of that nature. Different people say different things. It, that's where we get the word rapture from. In the Greek, it means to be snatched away. It means to be caught up. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, starting in verse number 13, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul writes, and y'all know this, this isn't something new to you. We do not, those here in the church know it, y'all on camera listen to me now. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep. In other words, people died. Back in the day, they would call a person who passed away, they would say that they were asleep 
They wouldn't say that they died. Uh, they, the Jews called it soul sleep. As a matter of fact, the word a cemetery um, came from the Hebrew or the Greek word for a hotel back in the days of Jesus. That's correct. We, it says here, for since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord. In other words, Jesus Christ himself told Paul this. Oh, I wish I could go into that for a second. Maybe next Sunday we'll do a sermon on the reasons Paul is one of the greatest evidences of the Christian faith. It's amazing, but just take my word for it. Almighty God talked to Paul. And Paul, and he says this. That we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. Now listen, for the Lord himself, I'm in verse 18, the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of a trumpet, and the dead and Christ will rise first. And listen, and those who are alive, who are left, in other words, all these people that were had, had given their life to Christ from the moment he ascended into heaven to, until, until today, you know, the, the ground opens up and out comes this amazing vision. I don't even know. I can't even describe it to you. And Jesus says, and then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up, wrap a pair, harpazo is the Greek, Amen. Caught up together with them in the clouds, not on St. Peter's Basilica, not at the Mount of Olives, not in Times Square. <laughs> Does your Bible say that? Does your Bible say in the clouds? Who, has anybody got a Bible that doesn't say in the clouds? Of course it says in the clouds. We're going to meet Jesus in the Lord in the air, and we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Oh, I got bad news for you, brother. You're going to have to go through the whole seven years of tribulation. But let me encourage you. Are you kidding? What would be encouraging about spending the whole seven years during this tribulation period? That's just one little hint. It's one little tip. There's many. There's many. Now, I'm not saying when this is going to happen, and I'm not going to today. You guys figure that out. If you want to know the names of some books that will give you all of the views, you come see me and you can read about it for yourself. Because when I say it to you, you may think that I'm wrong. You figure it out yourself. All I'm saying is it's going to happen. Is there anybody in this room that thinks, I, certainly you wouldn't, no one would raise their hand, that this isn't going to happen? It's, oh, but Bill, it's, it's spiritual. This, you, need to, you need to spiritualize this. This isn't literal, really. Okay, well, I guess Isaiah was wrong, too, when he said, Unto us a child is born. In the city of Bethlehem. And you'll call him Mighty Counselor and Almighty God and Prince of Peace. I guess he's spiritualizing that, too, wasn't he? Folks, if you're going to go to Piccadilly Cafeteria, you've got to eat the green beans and the lima beans. You don't get to just... Remember when you were a kid and they, mom and dad took you to the, get some of that, some of that? I don't know. This isn't, this isn't uh, a game show. If you, you know, I, these theologians, these liberal theologians, they don't, they won't, they don't spiritualize, spiritualize the Old Testament. Oh, these spiritualizes. Look, what does it say? What does it say? It says we, at some point in history, tomorrow, the next day, ten. I don't. Know, the Lord is going to come back, and all those who are in Christ are going to go up and meet Him in the air. It doesn't say meet Him on the ground. We go to Him. He's not coming down here and putting his feet on the Mount of Olives. If you want to read about that, read Matthew 24. You can read all about it. Because that's what happens. After. After the seven-year tribulation. You say to me, Pastor Bill, I want to make sure you know what you're talking about here. Fine. Turn over to 1 Corinthians um, uh, chapter... Uh, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 
in verse, no, I'm sorry, it's 1 Corinthians. I, I, I made a mistake there. It's 1 Corinthians <laughs> chapter 5 and, and verse 51. Or, hang on, hold on, let me find it. <laughs> 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 15. 1 Corinthians 15, 15. Just write that down. The Apostle Paul says, I tell you this, brothers, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. One of these days, if the Lord tarries and the world continues on, you, they're going to put you in the ground. Just a fact. Behold, I tell you a mystery. A mystery is something that's never been revealed before, and now he's revealing it. Paul says, we shall not all sleep. In other words, go to the cemetery. But we shall all be changed in the moment and the twinkling of an eye. How fast is the twinkling of an eye? There. Boom. I just did it. At the last trumpet. Now, there's going to be a big debate. If you start looking at this, you're going to have all the debates about what the last does. There's so many trumpets blowing, you don't know which one is the last one. So don't let that cat, don't let that bug you. Just read along with me here. It says, For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. For the perishable body must put on the imperishable, and the mortal body put on puts on the immortal. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the moral puts on the immortality, then shall come to pass the saying as it is written, Death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is, or death is swallowed up in victory. Death, where is your victory? Where is your sting? Okay, now there are some theologians that are going to tell you that that is the end of time when Jesus comes back and puts his feet on the ground. I disagree emphatically, but I don't have time to prove it to you right now, so I pray you'll just believe in me. What's the next thing that's going to happen here, friends, after this rapture? There's going to be a new home. Are you ready for a new house? I was looking at Facebook this morning. There was a house for sale in Vienna for $140,000. There's this little box. I'm like, man, this is great. Houses are going up in value. But you're going to have a new home. What kind of home is it going to be? You read it later. It's John 14. I'll summarize it for you. It's going to be unbelievable. That's what, how it's going to be. You say to me, Bill, you really believe that? Man, you believe in streets of gold. You better believe I do. And I'm looking forward to it because I have hope. And this whole world can, can just fall apart. I, it's fine. Uh, we're not in control anyway, friends. Uh, do you think you're in control? They, I get such a kick out of the people on the news channel. They think they're in control of November. They're not in control of November. God is in control of November. Now, the Lord, the Bible says the Lord, sometimes he turns someone over to their own wickedness, and he, and he kind of walks away, and, and the Lord has the right to do that. Amen. I don't think God has turned away from America. Can I get an amen? I think God is very much involved in what's happening in America, regardless of what some people say. And I believe that that awakening is going to come. What creates people to raise up and go, holy smokes, I need to do something. What will create that? Huh? A shaking. Yeah. A little pain. You'd be shocked. I don't know if you all have ever... Had to go, whoa, I, that was a wake-up call for me, but there's a wake-up call coming. Mm -hmm. there, there, that, without a doubt, there is. This new home is beautiful. Jesus is going to be crucified the next day. He tells the guys, he says, i got to go away, but I'm going to come back and get you. They say, where are you going? He says, you know where I'm going. They said, we have no idea where you're going. Tell us where you're going. He says, in my father's house are many mansions. In the, what your Bible may say, there are many rooms. It, it, he's going back to prepare a place for you. Yes, in the Jewish wedding, and after the, the wedding happens, the, the feast goes on for how many days? Seven days. Remember that. We're going to come back to that in a second. You're going to be in the Father's house. When the bride, when the groom comes and gets the bride, they go back, or they get betrothed, and then the groom goes back to the Father's house and they build a room on. 
to the house. God is building a room on his house for you. What will it look like? I don't know. <laughs> I'll be happy to have a tent on a field with Michelle there. <laughs> and a bunch of... In a bunch, all right, a beach. In a bunch, and a bunch of schnauzers. And he's built a house for you. Believe it. Believe it. You don't have the camera. Listen, believe it. I've been studying this for over 40 years, friend. Believe me on that. We, and we're not, we don't have anything to prove over here. Yeah, there's 30 of us standing in this, in this room. We're not, we, got, we don't have hundreds of people in here. we got to say the right things to keep people to hang around. Now we got nothing to prove at all. Come and find out. Check it for yourself. Not only are you going to have a new home with Jesus, but you're going to have rewards. That's This is item number three. You're going to have rewards. You say, what kind of rewards? I don't know. They give up all the fun. Be open. It's like opening up your Christmas present early. That wouldn't be any fun, would it? But there's going to be reward, rewards. I'm going to summarize this because I'm out of town. I'm out of time. I'm out of time. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, did you slip one of those pills to me? I mean, I'm excited. I, I love this stuff. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, there's going to be rewards. You're, you're going to, listen, everybody's going to go through that tunnel of light that everybody talks about. It's called fire. I really think that's what's going to happen. I think God's going to pull you through a tunnel of light. And whatever you've made in your life, People say you don't bring a U-Haul with you to the to the graveyard. Well, maybe you're going to pull something behind you because God's going to light it on fire. And the things that you have done in your life, if you if you have built in your life with good, with kindness, with love, with joy, with patience, all these things, if you have helped people in your lifetime, and you on the camera, if you've helped people in your lifetime, that is going to survive the fire. You can't, you can't, you can't destroy something. It's like trying to destroy energy. The second law of thermodynamics. You can't destroy energy. You can't replace it. You can't. You, you, it, you, it, it is what it is. But you can change it. You can make it different. Those things that we've done in our life, the, the Lord has given us jobs in advance to do, work in advance to do in our lives, to be kind. Yeah, Pastor Bill, I don't have time to go to Africa. How about you just be nice to the waitress today at lunchtime? You, you know I'm going to say that. How, how about you just help the lady next door to camp mower grass? How about that? You know, these types of things that we do. And y'all, if you're coming here on Wednesday night and on Friday night, particularly on Friday night, then that's a ministry to you. You're, you can go ahead and check that box off. If you're working with another place, you're doing, uh, Kelly's involved in all this stuff for the, for the city. If, if, if you're not involved in something that's helping someone, please take time to do that. You can do that. You truly can. I, you take an inventory. Ask yourself that question. You say to me, Pastor Bill, hey, look, man, I'm pressing, I'm pressing 95 years old. I can't hardly even get up out of bed. You can pray. You can pray, folks, folks, your prayers. The Bible says the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Man, woman, child availeth much. You can pray, but don't pray and then say, well, I can't go take somebody uh, a dinner. You can you can take them to dinner. You, you can help. You must. If you don't, if you, all those things, if you don't, when you go through that tunnel of fire, I'm telling you, you're going to drop on the floor, you're going to be on fire. <laughs> They're going to put a blanket on you and put you out. Jesus is going to look down. Ay, Dios mío, somebody get a fire extinguisher and put this. 1 Corinthians 3.10, read it. You know what the last word of it is? It says you will be saved. You will be. <laughs> you get pulled under the gate. Ah, I'm on fire. You don't want that. You want, to, you want, to, you want Jesus to, to, there's rewards for us. What are they? I don't know. I have no idea what all of them are, but I know you're, they're there. I know that. What's going to happen next? We're on number five, I think. One, two, four. three, four, five. We're on number four. Are you ready for this? These are promises. If this doesn't get you in a good mood, nothing will. Hey, hey man, you're gonna get you're getting a free meal in heaven. A free meal. It's called the marriage supper of the Lamb. Open up your Bibles to Revelation 19. You're gonna get a free meal in heaven. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord God Almighty. This is amazing. Listen to this. Amen. Hallelujah. 
In Revelation 19 and verse 6, it says, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude. John is in heaven. John was actually transported to heaven. It's called a rapture. John was transported to heaven. He witnesses, and folks, those of you watching on camera, you say, dude, you are absolutely whacked out. No, I'm not. Steven Spielberg couldn't come up with his stuff, man. And if he did, he'd make a movie about it. You know, I mean, this is, you, this, this is happening. This is going to happen. It says here, John says, Then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters, and like the sound of mighty pearls of thunder, crying out, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exalt and give glory to Him. When was the last time, oh my word, when was the last time you got up and just put your hands up and said, Hallelujah! And don't tell me it was at the WVU game. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time you did that in your kitchen? Oh, I can't do that. Yes, you can, and you must. You must. You want to. You want to get yourself in a good mood. You want to get rid of that depression, that oppression, all that routine. I, I know there's certain things that you can do. But I'll tell you one of them you can do. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The other day when I stood up and my knee. I thought somebody had shot me in the knee with a bullet. I first thing I said was, thank you, Jesus. I did. And then I took that pain pill and I said, thank you, Jesus, again. <laughs> For the marriage supper, the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. It was granted her to clothe herself with fine white linen, pure and bright. And the fine linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. Hope, oh, did you hear that? The righteous deeds of the saints. Who's the saint in here? Raise your hand. Come on. Bonnie, raise your hand. And the angel said to me, write this down. Hey, are you ready? Are you ready? Blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. Now let me tell you all something here. I had some fun with this. Because I just wonder, I just wonder, is it possible that there might be some people that land at Jesus' feet and he has to put them out with a fire extinguisher and look at it and say, Bubba, I ain't got no crown for you. I'm glad you're here because I love you and I died for you, but I don't have a crown for you. How sad that would be. Y'all, you can be you can be a carnal Christian your whole life. Listen to me on the camera. You can be a carnal Christian your whole life. Now you cannot blaspheme God and become apostate and expect that that run down the aisle you had at age seven was efficacious. That you were just having an emotional experience. But as an adult, if you have given your life to Jesus, meaning that you have. You have wept the tears of a lifetime to say, God, I'm sorry. I finally recognize that you are glorious and I am a sinner. And you have asked him to come into your life. You have received his gift of grace. Man, oh man, we, oh, if we have the rest of the afternoon. It's, it's a gift. Take it. Receive it. Hold it close to your chest and never let it go. Where is your harp? Is it in your is it in your closet, Rusty? Or is it on the stand out in your living room looking at the ocean, playing beautiful music for Jesus? What are you doing? Look on the camera, what are you doing? Give your life to Jesus. Is it possible that there might be some people that don't get that invite to that supper? You ever think about that? I don't know. This has nothing to do with salvation. This is something that happens in heaven. And we haven't even gotten to the, to the tribulation yet. Blessed are those, blessed are those who are invited. Now I'm taking a license here and I understand that. But listen, do you want to go to the married supper of the Lamb? I'm, I'm going to wrap this up because I'm tired. I think you guys can tell that. I'm pushing hard because I'm, I'm about to fall off the stool. Do you want to go? You know the difference in heaven and hell? Kyle, Travis, Stephen, come here. Gabby, come here. Come on, please. I'm going to show you.
show you the difference in heaven and in hell. Come here. Wrap your arms just like this. Around, put your arm on my shoulder. Go ahead. Make a straight line. There we go. Alright. Gabby, touch that post. Walk forward, Travis. Touch that post. Alright. Hold on. So, uh, how'd you wind up in hell? Oh, you rejected? Yeah, I did too. I, I wish I hadn't done that. I, but we're here. Now we can't get a hold of that dang glass of water because we're chained together like this. And, I mean, we're going to stare at that glass of water for eternity. We're, we're, our hands are chained. All right, now let's go to heaven. Let's go to heaven. Everybody smile. Don't let go. Yeah, <laughs> we go over and get that cup. Keep on and hold the cup. Okay. Keep holding the cup. Get that cup. Give me a drink. Okay. Come on. <laughs> Give me a drink. <laughs> oh, <that's good. laughs> Put it down. That's the difference in heaven and hell. The people in hell. They can't even figure out how to help themselves. The people in That's heaven, we will, we will feed ourselves. Amen? Amen? Finally, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. It happens, this happens to me every Sunday, and I, I just feel that that y'all, by 1230, we, we need to be let, letting you head out. So I'm going to sum, summarize this. Amen? I better sit down. Did you see the point there? Yeah. Yeah. If, I don't know. If somebody spent their whole life, and you may disagree with me, but there, there, I think there's so many Christians in America today that are, they're unattached. They're, they're just not. I mean, they, maybe they're saved, but they're just unattached. We're supposed to work together. We're a family. We are supposed to help each other no matter what, and we will. I, if this church never gets bigger than 30 people, we we were to help people. Period. No one goes hungry in this building. Period. Amen. Amen. Then you're going to have the, after the marriage supper, the Lamb. Then you've got the second coming. Revelation 19 describes it. The second coming is when Jesus, when Jesus brings with him his saints, that's us, the second coming, and he comes down to earth and he places his feet on the Mount of Olives. This is at the end of the seven year tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel. Jesus comes back, he places his feet on the Mount of Olives. And he brings us with us. Jude 1. Interestingly enough, Jude, who was Jesus Christ's brother, stepbrother, quoted the book of Enoch. This is the only place where it's mentioned in the Bible. It was also about these that Enoch, Enoch was two or three generations down from Adam. Oh, I'm sorry, seventh. He was the seventh from Adam. Enoch was the guy that got snatched up, you remember? The Lord took him. Guess him, what's that called? It's called a rapture, that's right. Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his holy ones. Now some people say that's angels. I don't think so. To execute judgment on all and to convict all the ungodly of all their deeds of ungodliness that they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the harsh things that ungodly sinners have spoken against God. Uh, uh, beloved, the, during the, tri the tribulation period, during the trip, and I don't, we're not, we don't have time to talk about that. But believe me, people are going to hate God. They're going to shake their fist at Him. The Bible says that they hate Him. The more, the more wrath that, that comes, the more they shake their fist and hate Him. How tragic that is! You will not be here for that. You may, we may not go up before the seventieth week. I don't know, uh, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we're going before the wrath falls. I, I'll, I'd bet anything on that. Amen. 
the, we're coming back with him. You read, you read Revelation uh, uh, chapter um, uh, 19 later on, and you'll see that Jesus is on a white horse. His name is put on our forehead. That's right. His, the robe that he is wearing is dipped in the blood of the martyr of the saints. Revelation chapter 7. And I looked under the altar and I saw the souls of those who had been martyred for their witness and their testimony. And they said, Lord, how long, how long will you, will you allow this to continue? And Jesus said to him, until the last one is saved. People will be saved during the tribulation period. Oh my gosh. Then there's going to be a millennium. Revelation 20. Read that again. You'll be, you're right there. Just keep reading it. There's a thousand year reign of Christ. You say to me, Brother Bill, you believe that's literal? I, just as much as I believe that Isaiah chapter 9 is literal. <laughs> you can't have this without that. You know, yes, I believe it's literal. A thousand years, we're going to rule and reign with Christ. And then finally, there's going to be a new, this is the seventh one, the promise. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Revelation 20 talks all about it. Just turn over there real quick and we'll wrap this up. I promise you we're, we're, we're going to just, want, okay, here we go. And then I saw an angel come down from heaven. Oh, that's talking about the seizure of the, the bottomless pit and, the, and the, uh, the dragon and so forth. And he says that he saw, um, he sees, hold on a second here. And then there was a great white throne of him who seated on it and his presence in the earth and the sky fled away. What do you mean fled away? How in the world can the earth and the sky flee, 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 flee away? <laughs> well, think about it for a minute. Is it possible that the literally where we are standing right now could literally just flee away? Yes. Watch this. Boom. There, I'm there. I'm there. How about you? I'm not going to get into this, y'all, but there's ten dimensions in front of us. God is right there. Jesus, he's right there. He is. He inhabits the praises of his people. There's angels in this room. If God would only let us see them, but we'd be, we'd be crazy if, if we, he let us see. It, there's, there, it's a new throne that, that's coming. It, it's the heavenly city. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and the first heaven and the old earth passed away, and the sea was no more. Sorry, honey. <laughs> and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared for a bride, adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God, and he will wipe away every tear from heaven, and death shall be no more, and neither shall be the mourning, nor there will be mourning, no more mourning, mourning, there will be no crying, there will be no pain, thank you, Lord, and the former things have passed away, and he who is seated on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. Hallelujah. Come on now. I'm making all things new. Write this down. He even says, write it down. Write it down, everybody. For these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will get from the spring of the water of life without payment. You don't have to pay for it. You can't earn it. You can't deserve it. It's a free gift from God. And to the one who conquers will have this heritage. And I will be his God. And he will be my son. Seven promises, the rapture of the church, a new house, rewards, the millennium. Oop, sorry. I said, I said, remember, I said this. The, the new heaven and the new earth, and of course then, what's the end? We don't know. We don't know what happens. This, the heavenly city of Jerusalem comes down. The millennium ends. The great white throne judgment occurs. What happens after that? We don't know. Yeah. But I guarantee you, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. All right. So those are some promises for you. 
to keep you keep you motivated. You wake up in the morning, you're not feeling well, just say, you know what, Lord, you, you're building me a house in heaven. You're making a meal for me in heaven. You're going to put a crown on my head in heaven. I get to go down and be with you for a thousand years on this earth doing some amazing things, and then you're going to take us back up to heaven, and who knows, we're going to go to the outer part of the galaxy, and who knows, I don't know, but it's going to be good. Amen. All right. God bless you guys. Are you okay? All right. You you may. Wait. Hold on one second before you say that. Don't forget, if you have a key to this building, please stay. We've got to show you how to use it. Sherry, come on up. So I just come on. Come, come on. Um, you guys have seen David for a while. He's, he's been um, getting better. He's an amity. He's been there, I don't know how long. I don't know how many days he's been clean. I've never seen this man so on fire and for God in my life. He actually got COVID, so he was quarantined to himself. He's never been alone to me, as far as I can see, for any kind, any amount of days alone. He's a, alone with God. So this time he's put alone on, I believe, on purpose. He got COVID to be alone with God. And that little bat, that little bat, that last part of him being in there. I mean, he's still got a couple more weeks of being in there. Y'all see how much David smokes, right? He has not smoked a cigarette in, I think this is five days. That's a lot for him. Being in a, in a place like that, being in where everybody's smoking, he goes out with them when they smoke, they won't give him a cigarette because he told them he was going to quit. And so nobody gives him nothing. Um, he is doing a little bit of, you know, nicotine day not touch the cigarette. To me, that's unbelievable. Amen. For David, that takes a cheap cigarette, rips the filter off, and smokes that yeah. down yeah. to the core. Uh, he doesn't like the smell of it. I can't stand the smell of cigarettes. That's amazing to me. That's unbelievable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I yeah. And he's doing the work. God has given him the will. Do all things through God. We can do all things. Just don't forget. Amen. All right. So hey, we'll be here tomorrow night. We're praying for this for our, the people in this church, the community, the state, the nation, and the world. We do it every Monday night. We have a Bible class uh, or ministry school from six four thirty to six thirty. And uh, next Saturday we'll have uh, Bible college. Anybody wants to come is invited. God bless you. Prayer God bless you. Sir? Sir? Yeah, Monday evening. Yeah, amen. And we're serious about it. There's an awakening coming. And your kids and your grandkids are going to get waked up. Amen. All right. Let's go in peace. The Lord bless you.